It's now time to start my Spock build. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, it is now time to get started with our Spock build. Uh, however, before moving forward, I do want to make mention of an issue I've come across, unfortunately, with the head sculpt that I purchased off of eBay. This is the one, of course, with the beard, and it is what gave me the idea of doing the whole uh, concept with the mirror universe. Uh, unfortunately, the head here is a bit too small. Uh, it just had to be a little bit larger to be proportional with our kit, but um, I almost moved forward with it. Uh, but Mark Fraley uh, um, brought to my attention that Cult TV Man happened to have a few head sculpts. The, this is the one that he's using in stock so I decided after much thought to go ahead and order that. Uh, I really do like this mirror uh, universe concept so I'm actually gonna try to uh, sculpt a beard onto that head sculpt. Uh, hopefully it'll look right. I'm gonna use epoxy sculpt uh, to, to do that and if it doesn't look right I'll just have to take it off and then we'll build Spock as he is here. So uh, that's gonna take a few days to get in. In the meantime let's go ahead and get started with the base. So I've already uh, applied some uh, liquid mask here to the areas I'm going to uh, install some lights. If you recall, I'm going to light up the flowers and I'm going to call this the hot lava here. Um, I have this area masked off with masking tape and liquid mask fluid here and these are the centers of each of the flowers there. So uh, since this is done, I'm going to go ahead now and apply some black primer to do some light blocking here. All right, so I have the inside now uh, primed with the black primer. I use Steinol Rest Primer. As you can see now, I have the liquid mass that I had in place here peeled away uh, for the flowers. And uh, this is the way this is all going to get put together is I'm going to be attaching this to the wooden base here. And once it's attached, I'm going to be building in some terrain here or sculpting in some terrain to match uh, the base that we were given here. So it's kind of an extension of what we were given with our model kit. Now because once this is attached, I can't remove it, I have to have everything set for the lighting. So the next step here is to paint the area inside the pit. And in order to mask the area around it, I decided just to use liquid masking fluid. Since the area is so contoured, it made it much easier just to apply the fluid versus trying to use masking tape. So the color used for the pit was hot orange from Vallejo's Game Color brand mixed with some yellow. I then applied some vermilion to add some color variation. All right, just bear with me, I have a little sunlight peeking through here, but that's okay, it's uh, keeping this from being bleached out by the camera so you can see the effect better. Uh, so what I've got going on now are breathing LEDs in the pit, but as you can see now, the ones in the flowers are steady. So I actually purchased breathing LEDs for this entire thing, but uh, after putting them in place, it looked too much. Uh, it looked a bit too much. It looked like almost like a disco. <laughs> so uh, what I decided to do was to go ahead and, and replace them with a steady uh, SMD red chip size lights there underneath the flowers while retaining the pulsating effect for the pit. And I think this will work out really well. Uh, the breathing effect, let me just go ahead and lift this up now. And I just want to give you a close up now of the Pico sized SMDs now. These are from Model Train Software. Again, the breathing mini LEDs. And I think this effect will work real well. If you, as you notice, I have these. Uh, mega size SMDs, I was just experimenting to see if uh, those would work any better, but they were too bright. Okay, so I am ready to secure all the lights in place now. I did cut a larger piece of wood here uh, because I, I, I felt the other one was a bit too narrow uh, this way. Uh, I needed a little bit more room uh, for our backdrop there. So what I did next was to draw the outline of where we'll be placing our base here and inside of that I drew the outline for the pit and that allowed me some reference here to, as to where to put these uh, SMDs and these are now the three pico size SMDs that will light up the pit. So I have them temporarily secured in place with some masking tape. I'm going to use some hot glue now to uh, permanently secure them and uh, I already have them soldered now to the other two SMDs that we'll be using to light up the flowers. They are now positioned here um, I glued them onto some styrene plastic and that way allowed us to easily position in the center of each dome. So they are all uh, soldered together and these are now the uh, negative and positive leads that will be leading out of a hole which I'll drill here in a second uh, and that will lead out to our battery. Okay, so I have this now attached to the wooden base and turning this over you can see the leads for our battery and switch. So I'll tell you what, before we move on, let's go ahead and check on Mark's progress. Hello everyone. I just want to start off saying that it's a real honor 
and a privilege to be back here on the Interstellar Modeler YouTube channel. Thanks uh, to my good friend Augie for inviting me back to do another buddy build. And as we stated earlier, we're going to be doing the AMT Mr. Spock model that has been around since uh, about 1967 actually. So um, I will be going into a brief history of that model kit and uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the different iterations and repops that have been done over the years. But of course the version that we are building is the latest from round two. Now Augie and I are approaching this from different creative processes. As he stated, he's going to be doing the Mirror Universe Spock, where I will be doing the Prime Universe Spock in his original series uniform. So um, where he's going to be doing a base and background that more resembles the bots art, I am changing it up a little bit, um, doing a different background as you can see here. Um, I've also changed the base a bit. Um, and I will go into how I how I did all this uh, in this video. Um, I just want to start off by apologizing that I didn't shoot a whole lot of live video for this for this video. Um, it's something I'm just not accustomed to doing, and I get into the creative process and I forget all about shooting video until I'm done. So um, I will make uh, more of an effort in the next video to actually shoot some in in progress live video for you. Um, so for this video it's primarily going to be a slideshow format with my narrative on, on what I did and how we got to this point in the build. Okay, so let's start off with a little bit of trivial history on the AMT Mr. Spock model kit. According to Rick Polizzi's Classic Plastic Model Kits, the AMT Mr. Spock model was originally released in 1967 in 112 scale. It was also released in England in 1972 under the Aurora brand name. In 1979, Star Trek The Motion Picture came out, and this version was modified, giving Spock a new uniform and a communicator instead of a phaser. The base was also cut in half, and a three-headed snake was omitted. This is the box art for the current version that Augie and I are building in this buddy build. This is all the parts that are included in the kit. And as you can see, there are not a lot of parts in this kit. You can actually assemble this rather quickly if you wanted to. To facilitate painting, I find it best to assemble the various parts into sub-assemblies first. Early in the planning stages of this build, I knew I wanted to have a background of some kind for uh, my Spock diorama. I was considering using screenshots from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Another option I was considering was using um, the backdrop for Talus 4 from the uh, pilot episode called The Cage. I even went so far as modifying the leaves on the on the tree to be blue. Um, it'd be kind of reminiscent of the plants we see in the, uh, the original pilot episode. But I wasn't really satisfied with this. So using Paint Shop Pro, I um, modified the bots art into a custom backdrop. I refined it further into a second version and then finally the final backdrop which um, is the one I'm going to use in this build. It is also based on the bots art but um, heavily modified. I like to use Vallejo ground texture acrylic putty for laying out my groundwork. It works really well for creating coarse terrain on a fairly level surface. It also cleans up really easily uh, just using water. I also needed some large rocks and boulders for my diorama. These are made using Aves Epoxy Sculpt. I use packaging paper, but you can use paper towels or newspaper to create small rises and hills in your diorama. Masking tape is then used to secure it in place. 
I then applied some plaster cloth over the top of that to create a hard shell over my hills. When dry, you can apply it to your groundwork as usual. Add the boulders and then blend it in with some more acrylic putty. You can see the results here. Next, the entire diorama is placed in the spray booth and painted with black Stino Res primer. Next, using my airbrush, I block in the primary um, earth tone colors for the base using Iraqi sand, golden browns, and some reds. Deep shadows are also placed to give the uh, base some dimension and some depth. Vallejo khaki was hand painted to simulate uh, the water that is surrounding the islands in my base. I wanted it to blend seamlessly into the background that I created earlier. So that's about where I am now in this project. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, in part two, I will finish up the work on the base and I will then move on to the figures and including Mr. Spock and the snakes. So stay tuned for part two and I'll see you in the next video. Wow, that's some pretty cool stuff, right? Mark is an exceptional builder. I'm not surprised how well his is turning out. I can't wait to see the rest of his build there. Um, so let me get you caught up with my base. If you recall, I was going to be using this as my guide. I want it to look pretty much like what we see in the box art here. And I've made a lot of progress, and it is pretty much completed as well. This is the way it looks. So I have it all wired to the battery. All the lights are set to go. I'm going to hold you a little in suspense with that and wait to show that to you uh, at the final reveal. In the meantime, let me spend a few minutes and get you caught up on how I got to this point. The first thing I did was to add some filler to create the contour and rise that we need. For this, I used leftover pieces that I trimmed off the wooden base. After combining a 50-50 mix of the epoxy sculpt, I placed it onto the filler and began the shape and sculpt. And once the basic shape was formed, I used these sculpting tools to create surface rocks and other details. And one thing that's important to remember is to keep the epoxy sculpt wet as you are doing your work. This makes it very easy to shape and form. Now the base has a particular dimpled texture to it, and to replicate this, I found that the blunt end of a paintbrush worked best. I repeated the same technique with the second island. The last touch was to add an additional tree, and this was done by placing the epoxy over this wire tree frame I found at Hobby Lobby. Um, by the way, I, I have this here. This is a, um, a tree that I used for the ARC-2 uh, display. It came with about six of them, and it's just a wire tree. It's supposed to represent a dead tree. All I did was put the epoxy sculpt on there, as you saw, and... Uh, you know, little by little created this tree here that's going to resemble the tree that comes with the kit. It's just a smaller version of it. So, okay, so once the two islands were dry, I went ahead and primed them with Steinle Res Gray Primer. So everything is all set to move forward here now. So uh, the steps I'm going to take now are first to paint the islands, or at least the majority of the uh, base color anyway. Uh, paint the islands and the rocks and so forth. Um, and then what we're going to do is apply the texture around. So the colors I'm going to use for the islands are going to be the yellow green here from Vallejo, along with some browns mixed in for some shading. To create the muddy environment, I'm going to use this stuff from Vallejo called Thick Mud. And then some other additional detailings to add this stuff here, just to create some puddles all over. And then to add in a little bit more vegetation using these woodland tufts. Next, King Painting. The base color used here was Vallejo Model Colors Yellow Green. And for the shadowing, I mixed in some Burnt Umber. This was then followed by the application of the highlights. The light green color was combined with a little bit of ivory and was dry brushed onto the surface. 
What's nice is that the textured surface of the base made it easy to apply the highlights with all the divots and rises that you see here. To add some color to our scene, I decided on using Vallejo's gray blue for the rocks. And later, I added some dark gray and black to shadow and give the illusion of texture. And next came the application of Alejo's European Mud. This acrylic thick mud mixture was very easy to work with. Because the application of the mud was kind of thick, I let this dry overnight. Once it was nice and solid, I was ready to apply the little tufts of grass. These little tufts can be found at thearmypainter.com and to better match the scene, I applied Vallejo's green ochre to them. Okay, well everything is done now and I'm pretty satisfied with the way it all turned out. I think we're pretty much set here. Uh, as you can see, I have a few puddles. At first I had a lot more scattered around, but uh, I don't know, it just wasn't looking quite right to me and I ran that by my friend Kenny Conklin and Mark Fraley. They both agreed that it was just way too much, so I toned it all down. I textured over a bunch of them and I'm left with just a few here and I think that looks good. Uh, the tufts worked out really well. Uh, does look like vegetation there growing here and there. I didn't want to go overdo that, so I think that's the right amount here. And uh, so what we're going to do is I'll finish up the flowers a little, a little bit and obviously need to work on a tree, but uh, I want to show you what I'm doing now with the backdrop. And that's how I got to that point. Now, I was originally going to leave that Vallejo mud, that brown color. However, when I uh, placed the background up against this, I realized it didn't blend all that well. So I decided to take Vallejo's yellow green, add a little bit more yellow to it, and use my airbrush and apply that color all along the textured surface, and I think it works much better. Now, as for the background, I used Photoshop for that, and I can't take the time, of course, to teach you how to use Photoshop here. It, that's a whole different subject. However, I've been using this program for quite some time, and as you know, Photoshop has the ability to manipulate images. And uh, in this case, what I did was I used the program to cover up Spock and the snake by simply taking pieces of the surrounding area and background and covering them up. So it worked real well for that. So I took the image and then printed it onto the vinyl paper I used for the Batman project. Uh, the, the back piece here is this foam board material that you can get at Hobby Lobby. It has styrene plastic on either side. Uh, easy to cut, easy to score with your X-Acto knife. And uh, now, one thing I want to mention is when I applied the vinyl piece onto this back board, um, what I did this time, because I actually, it took about a few different tries to get it right. Um, I uh, ended up printing it up a little bit larger than the back piece and uh, that allowed me to have to match just two sides and so you had some overhang on the other side so you laid it down and then once it was in place I used my X-Acto knife to cut off the excess. All right, and that's pretty much a wrap. So uh, before we uh, conclude the video, however, I want to mention a couple other things. Uh, as I've done with decals that I've created for projects in the past, I want to make this JPEG available to my subscribers. So uh, just be a subscriber, and you can email me at innerstudermodeler at gmail.com, and I'll send you this JPEG that you need to create your own backdrop just like this. It's uh, printable or, or sized to be printed on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um, the stuff that I use to print on is this here. It's uh, from... Uh, Cricut Explorer. It's printable vinyl paper with adhesive on the back side. Um, just one tip here in, when you're using this stuff is that the edges do tend to curl sometimes, so just make sure before you run it through your printer it's nice and flat, otherwise those edges will get caught and it'll mess everything up. Now, uh, one other thing is uh, I want to make a shout out to Roy Blair. He's uh, one of your fellow modelers out there and one of my subscribers. He brought to my attention a way to mount a battery that's uh, going to be a little bit easier to do than having to create those plastic enclosures that I always do out of styrene plastic. Um, so as you see, the battery is resting here in this little container or this little holder. And what that is is this coupling piece from this uh, system that is used to conceal wires in your home. It just so happens that this coupling piece is just the right size you need to hold a 9 volt battery. It's perfect. Uh, all I did was I used uh, some super glue to hold it in place and it works great. So thank you Roy. I really appreciate that tip. I'm sure all of us can benefit from that. So thanks again for watching. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Hopefully you're enjoying this uh, build here. Mark and I are sure enjoying bringing it to you. And uh, the next video will uh, cover the building of the snake figure and Mr. Spock. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at innerstuttermodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. Take care.